<laughs> this is how I get cancelled. Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Virtual Raid. And yes, I know this is a very clickbaity video title, but I've actually got some like really interesting uh, stories to tell you about this. And I hope it can be a little bit educative for everyone. So first of all, just for the people who are confused what the hell this is about. In my previous videos, many people pointed out a folder in the sidebar of my Ableton that has the name Racist Samples. And people were confused, what is that about? So obviously everyone knows I'm German, everyone knows all Germans are racist, so I just thought it was gonna make sense. I don't know why people are confused. <laughs> obviously there are no actually racist samples in there. I don't even know what that would be. Like recordings of white people saying the N-word. Maybe like actual recordings of like Hitler's speeches or something. Gah. There does actually exist like right-wing rock music with horrible lyrics. That existed in Germany for a while. I hope it does not anymore. It's like imagine punk rock, but punk rock is super leftist. But imagine that with right-wing lyrics and also their shit at playing their instruments. Because if you're so stupid that you are a fascist, you also probably can't play an instrument. So let me tell you a story of something that happened to me with the use of samples of a certain ethnic group or religious group, actually. And I didn't, and I didn't know that this was happening because it was a sample I just got off of Splice. So somewhere on Splice, there was this pack with field recordings from like uh, nature, from cities, just like background ambience of streets. You would hear cars pass by, someone on a bicycle. So some of those field recordings had a voice in them that sounded like a man singing or talking over a loudspeaker in a in a village. So there was like wind noise and ambience, and then you could just hear this voice saying something or singing something, but it was in a foreign language. Once I used this in a song of mine, I was informed that that is in fact the, I'm gonna butcher this word, I'm sorry, Adhan, the Muslim call for prayer, which I guess in some villages gets broadcasted through loudspeakers and then everyone prays together, which is great. But I didn't know that. And then some people texted me like, hey, why is this in there? Some people were confused. Some people didn't like that being in there. And I can totally understand that. I feel like it's both a fault on like maybe the sample pack side where they should have known what they're recording. Or maybe they should have known that some people of this religion that this recording is from don't like hearing that in music. And I should have probably also informed myself what I put into my songs before releasing them, especially if there's something being said in a language in the background that I don't understand. So I just want to pass this on to you that whenever you use something, if it's tribal chants, vocal loops or chant loops from all kinds of ethnicities, make sure to check what they're actually saying, what context this was in, just so that stuff like this doesn't happen to you. And yeah, and it happened to me, you can run into this by accident on Splice if you're just like, oh, I'm just gonna grab the sample, this sounds cool, this sounds like a little, little bit exotic, a little bit tribal and earthy, and I want that kind of vibe for the song. And then, oops, they were saying something that I didn't understand, and I probably should have checked that in advance, but also whoever made the pack should have checked that in advance too. So that was that story. If any of these samples are still in some of my songs, let me know if I forgot to take them out somewhere, if you want me to remove them, totally fine. I'm gonna go through my catalog as well and make sure I didn't use that loop anywhere else. But on this topic, this is also like an interesting conversation I've had recently where I was talking to someone who moved over to the US from China. We were talking about music and somehow this topic of musical cliches and movies came up. I played this, you, you all know this like standard riff that's just like, I was like played that to them and I was like, isn't that racist? And then they were like, no, why? Like, why should that be racist? And I was like, cause it's the, I, I don't, I don't know. I felt really stupid actually. Cause they were like, Hey, it matters what context this is being used in. And if this is meant to ridicule people or if it is meant in like a comedic context in a movie or a sketch or whatever, that's completely different. Like what is the intention behind the use of that? And that made a lot of sense to me. I felt like oftentimes with something as like cliche as this, melody. The people most vocal about it are usually people that aren't like involved in this. Like I remember something of like a guy dressing up in a sombrero and like a cliche Mexican outfit and everyone was like cultural appropriation. But then actual Mexicans were just like, hey, that's cool. This is dope. Do, do your thing, man. And I feel like more often than not, that is the case. Maybe this can also be a little bit compared to comedians making jokes about disabled people. So like on one side, the context and the intention of the joke matters. And on the other side, this is just me speaking for myself. If there are any disabled people watching this, please let me know in the comments. Because if I was blind or mute or couldn't walk, uh, was in a wheelchair, and then comedians make jokes about everyone except for me, then I would feel kind of left out. I'd be like, where are the blind people jokes? 
I'd feel better if I was included in that. And I wouldn't feel offended if there was a joke about whatever disability I have. If it is obviously not incredibly tasteless, that's a given. In before people are going to be offended by something I said in this video. I'm very sorry. I just wanted to like talk about this and also just like spread this information about ethnic samples and figure out what they actually say. Maybe find someone who knows what language it is going to translate it before you use it in your music. Ah. So now why is there a folder called racist samples? So me and some producer friends were collecting a lot of really good world music samples, ethnic samples, like tribal chants, weird instruments that aren't very common that are only like used in Southeast Asia or in Africa and like all over the world, just like trying to find these rare samples and kind of just like because of the stupidity of the previous that that thing there's just like this little connotation with the like cultural appropriation <laughs> whenever people use samples like that obviously it's totally fine so it was just like some in joke to be like these are racist samples because <laughs> people are going to be like why are you using this you're not uh, that you're not that that culture of the sound that you're using why yeah yeah it's very stupid it's a dumb in joke that just confused people by just seeing that folder there so let's actually have a look inside there's some really useful stuff in there and it's hard to find good sample packs with good world music sounds and loops for example uh, i don't know where i had this pack from this this is a folder from a pack that was literally just called world underscore oh five yes, go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Hi. there's some other cool things in here though like for example this indian type of it's like between beatbox and scat. Ah, oh, damn, I knew the name for this. If you've seen the movie RRR, they do it a lot in the soundtrack for that. There's like a longer one here somewhere too. Yeah, that one. I'm gonna look this up. Oh, it's called Konakol. Okay. <laughs> they get so fast and it sounds like they're talking to each other. I love this. <laughs> That's so dope. Yeah, and then other things that are hard to find are um, certain string instruments, for example. Like I feel like a koto, like because it's plucked, is sort of easy to turn into a contact library. But in ehu, I think it's one string instrument that kind of sounds. It sounds like a voice. It has this like small little corpus at the bottom. With I think they used to use snake leather, snake skin for it. You'll all know the sound of this. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> Because it's so expressive, the vibrato and everything, the slide from one note to another, this is really difficult to turn into like a playable contact instrument, for example. So sometimes you just got to work with a couple of loops you find and then stitch them together and pitch them and tune them to just like create the melody that you want that instrument to play. All right, that was just that. Next video is going to be about some crazy production advice again. I just wanted to share this experience with you that I had with that one uh, ethnic sample where I didn't know what it was from and then I found out through people commenting. And if you know any good uh, like ethnic and world music sample packs that are safe, <laughs> uh, tell me in the comments because they're hard to find. All right, everybody have a good rest of your day. Don't be racist.